Hi, this is Rafael de Souza, and this is just a video summary of my presentation on, uh, on in the Brazilian Embassy in Oslo on March 20, 2019. The presentation is about foreign direct investment in Brazil, and I started my presentation showing this map from uh, 1556, and uh, showing here the signs of the first foreign direct investment in the land of Brazil, which was inhabited by uh, the native Brazilians, and uh, here are the Europeans coming to get the first uh, contact with them uh, and uh, explore some of the natural riches. Um, the whole presentation is based on this chart that shows pretty much that since 1947 we can see that there is a clear distinction between uh, what happened in the past about foreign direct investment in Brazil and what's happening right now. So uh, there is a cut here in 1994. This is because of the Real Plan and it's a plan that uh, stabilized inflation and uh, enabled Brazil to have a better uh, consumption or uh, purchasing power allowing more companies to go to Brazil and invest more and increasing the investment in the country as a whole. Uh, my presentation is an attempt to answer five questions. Why invest in Brazil? What is the global investment scenario related to Brazil? Which countries invest the most in Brazil? And uh, which industries get the most? And uh, how did the foreign direct investment behave uh, in the last 20 years. The presentation is divided in three parts. First is a macro view, second is the world investment scenario, and third is the Brazilian investment scenario. The first part is about uh, the economy of the country, and I would like to focus first on GDP. GDP, and uh, here is the problem that we've been having. Right here is the Great Recession that Brazil experienced between 2015 and 2017. Uh, we are recovering from it. Uh, we had great period, a great period in the 2000s. We have we had increase in GDP, uh, you know, high above four uh, percent in most of the decade, even reaching eight percent. Since uh, 2011, though, uh, we had this decrease in GDP, uh, which caused uh, uh, our recession, or which was the explanation of our recession in uh, 2015 and 2017. Brazil is the eighth country in the world with uh, three thousand three three trillion dollars in GDP, according to the World Bank. We are the eighth economy in the world. Uh, and our GDP behaved pretty much like this since 1990. Uh, it was one trillion dollars back then. It behaved like this for quite a while. Uh, it could have gone all the way here. But as we had our recession, the GDP went and stagnated for a while. Had we continued the trend, we could be here with more than $4 trillion, which would make us probably jump from 8th, maybe to the 5th position as the 5th largest economy in the world. It's gone, we lost this opportunity. How about uh, the GDP per capita? GDP per capita Brazil, however, if we divide the GDP by the population and get the GDP per, per capita, Brazil is not good. We only have $15,000 uh, as uh, per capita GDP in Brazil, very far from uh, the developed countries, which have something between fifty and uh, 65 thousand dollars as G per capita GDP. Again, the exercise uh, uh, the, with uh, the GDP per capita, we started with almost seven thousand uh, dollars in GDP. Now we have fifteen thousand. Again, if had we continue with the trend, we could have been, you know, pretty close to twenty thousand um, uh, dollars as per capita GDP, making us closer to the richest countries in the world. But it didn't happen, again, because of our recession, which stagnated the, the increase in our GDP. Inflation is very important if you want to invest in Brazil. And this is just a summary. Uh, in the 80s, Brazil was used to high inflations. We had inflations of 100%. We got a peak of 300%, had a plan here that dropped it a little bit. But the big problem was here when we reached 7,000%. Can you imagine being in a country with 7,000%? If you go and drink a coffee today, if it's one real, and if you come back here at the end of the year or, or 12 months later, it costs 71 reais. Very difficult scenario for that. We had another plan trying to curb it. Uh, it got... Uh, it got a little lower, but, uh, you know, we got to 5,000, and that was um, the inflation that we had in 1994 when we had the Real Plan. The Real Plan effectually, effectively 
decreased inflation in Brazil, and uh, we try we started to experience, let's say, normal compared to the rest of the world inflation rates. For us, it was something around the seven percent, and in two thousand and eighteen, we had inflation of three point seventy five percent, which is one of the lowest that we had in history. Another variable that I mentioned, and I think that has some relations with uh, the foreign direct investment, is uh, the exchange rate. I show that this blue line, uh, which is the Brazilian uh, exchange, I compare it to the euro and to the pound. And um, just to show that Brazil has a lot of volatility in our exchange rate. For example, right here, we had uh, this four reais per dollar in Brazil in 2002, 2003. Um, that shows that uh, since 1999, when Brazilian uh, foreign currency, when Brazilian exchange rate is started to free float, we had uh, experienced a lot of volatility. It's uh, the exchange rate sort of reflected and has been reflecting a lot of the political situation in Brazil. It, it's not only related to exports and imports or the inflow of capital in Brazil. At the end of the day, it becomes like a thermometer of the political situation in Brazil. So whenever you have a crisis, um, the foreign exchange rate goes up. It went up in 2002. With the crisis in 2008, it went up again. It went out, uh, up with uh, the impeachment of President Dilma and it went up again with the election of uh, current President Bolsonaro. The foreign direct investment and the net position of foreign direct investment, this is just the, the same chart as I showed before. There has been a huge increase since 1994. So here I try to compare the foreign direct uh, investment in Brazil, which is this blue line. So if you look at this blue line, this is how the foreign direct investment uh, behave in Brazil in the in the last uh in the last 25 years or almost yeah in the last uh, almost 30 years so this is the blue one uh, the monthly uh in inflow uh the monthly total uh inflow of dollars in brazil and uh, in this first chart i want to compare it with the exchange rate which is this great line here to see if there is any correlation does the ex the foreign exchange rate define foreign direct investment in brazil my first conclusion with this chart is that it does not. There is no statistical correlation between these two variables here. So uh, I just uh, say that although it's interesting because if you try to invest in Brazil and if you come right here, you would get four reais for one dollar. That means that if you have one million dollars to invest in Brazil, you would get four million reais in Brazil at, in this day, eh? at this specific period. However, if you leave to make investments here at this point of the chart, we are talking about one and a half. We are talking about uh, one million and five hundred thousand reais for each one million dollars. So one may think, well, the highest uh, the exchange rate, the more attractive is the country for foreign direct investment. But this is not the case in Brazil. It has not happened like that in the last uh, 25 years, 30 years in Brazil. When we had this huge or high uh, point here, uh, it didn't correspond to a higher foreign direct investment in Brazil. On the other hand, when the exchange rate was very low, that's when we got the peak. So uh, just by looking at these charts, we see that there are no correlations between the foreign exchange rate and foreign direct investment in Brazil. How about uh, the nominal deficit? A lot of people say that, you know, if the country does not have its, uh, its tax uh, budget uh, execution uh, in a good situation, then it will not attract uh, foreign direct investment. This is not the case. The charts show that here. It shows that we have had this uh, deficit in Brazil for quite some time, you know, for, for more, than, more than 10 years. It dropped a little bit, but at this period, uh, the foreign direct investment has started to grow. So when it reached here, we still had a huge uh, deficit. Then, after a while, and as the economy decreased, uh, we should expect a foreign direct investment to decrease too. And finally, when we got to this period here, we got into our recession, and then, uh, you know, uh, then foreign direct investment sort of stagnated here, but it didn't drop a lot. It still continued high. Uh, so, um, again, I don't see any correlation between the deficit of the federal government in Brazil with foreign direct investment. 
I see other things impacting uh, foreign direct investment in Brazil. For example, here I showed the increase in the minimum salary. So if you take the minimum salary at this point here of the chart, which is one of the lowest, it was less than $250 per month in Brazil. There was a governmental uh, policy of increasing the value of the, the minimum wage, and it went up all the way until 2011 again, when we have our stagnation and our subsequent uh, recession. But with the increase of the minimum salary, people had more money to buy more things in Brazil. And by having more money, uh, the economy as a whole reacted. You have more sales, in, as I will show. So uh, the minimum salary was a very important uh, aspect of uh, this period in Brazil. And, I, and if you look at the correlation between the curves there, it's very high. So it means that, uh, yeah, there was an impact. You can say, you can statistically say that there was a, an impact of the increase of the minimum salary uh, in relation to the foreign direct investment in Brazil. On top of the increase of the minimum salary, there was also an increase in credit in Brazil. So if you look at credit as a percentage of GDP, uh, you see here at the same point of the beginning of the, of the increase in the minimum salary, you can see it here. On top of the increase of the minimum salary, there was this increase in the credit available for consumption, basically. Also for investment, but a lot of it based on consumption. So you can see that there was this uh, increase in credit. So if you put together a higher minimum salary, which almost doubled between $250 a month to $450, dollars a month and if you give more credit to the population you had a strong boost you had a huge increase into in the uh, in the consumption power of the brazilian population my interpretation of the statistics about it is that this was more responsible for the increase of foreign direct investment as soon as uh, we have into the recession then credit drops and uh, and the foreign direct investment continues pretty much the same so if we look at these two other variables, they have a strong correlation, an increase in the minimum salary and an increase in credit available to the population. May the population, for example, buy more cars and parts. Look at this line here. It's uh, the line of uh, car sales and car and part sales in Brazil. So if you look at it, you can see that it pretty much corresponds to the behavior of the curve of foreign direct investment in Brazil. What does it mean? It means that people were buying more cars. Like in 2011, Brazil, we had the, the sale of 5 million cars. It was a record, historical record. So you have people buying more, that attracts more foreign direct investment because you have a more, you have a stronger uh, consumption market in Brazil because population started to get more money and to get more credit. This other line here also shows a huge impact and that's the increase in uh, the sales, supermarket sales. So if you look at uh, right here again, if you look at the beginning of this period and if you look all the way to, um, you know, all the way to the beginning of the recession, you can see that there was an increase in the supermarket sales and uh, that also caused uh, a very good and positive impact in foreign direct investments. So my first conclusion is that as long as you have this, as long as we had uh, in the last 20 years this huge increase in the purchasing power of the Brazilian population, that was one of the main causes for the increase of foreign direct investment. Any company wants, that wants to invest somewhere must have a market, a consumption market with people with money. And that's one of the reasons why Brazil is so attractive. It's a huge country with a huge population compared to other countries. And when this population has money, everybody, every company wants to invest in Brazil. The second part of my presentation was about the world investment scenario, and I'm going to go very quickly over it. Uh, there was a decrease in 2017 of 23% in global financial in, in the foreign direct investments in the whole of the world. And Brazil, but Brazil jumped. This is the position in 2016. We were the seventh country receiving foreign direct investments, uh, and we jumped to the fourth position in 2017. We, we are only after the United States, which had a huge drop, China and Hong Kong. If we put China and Hong Kong together and we consider it rightfully as China, Brazil is the third 
is the third country in the world receiving foreign direct investment. Even in a period of recession, companies continue to invest in Brazil because companies know the potential of Brazil as a huge consuming market. So Brazil had this kind of behavior. It uh, received uh, almost $63 billion in 2017, more than double of our friend in Mexico, which received half of it. 40% of all the flow in Latin America was for that. Uh, we had a lot of acquisi mergers and acquisitions. Uh, nine of the largest ones were in Brazil. And the focus was on electricity, oil, infrastructure, and agribusiness. China, for example, alone bought one company in Brazil, the company of my hometown, Campinas. Uh, it, is, it is an electricity company, and it bought it for $4.4 billion dollars. One, speci one specific operation for $4.4 billion. Uh, there was, this helped a boom in the energy sector. So the energy sector had an increase in $12 billion. Uh, also, transport and storage uh, was multiplied by four and had this impact. Chemical uh, market in Brazil, the chemical sector in Brazil, doubled to $3.2 billion. The food industry also doubled. And the metallurgy almost increased by almost 50% to 3. The oil sector um, had a decline in 2017, but in 2018 it increased. Anyway, it's a huge uh, amount of money invested in the oil sector in Brazil. This uh, table is just to show the stock uh, of a foreign direct investment in Brazil. It's around $800 billion. That is almost $1 trillion, and uh, that's the stock, that's the liability, that's all the investment, the capital invested in Brazil or, or, all that time. Capital, including also some uh, intercompany loans, as I will show soon. So we're talking about $800 billion transferred to Brazil as foreign direct investment. Conclusion number two is that Brazil is one of the top recipients of foreign direct investment in the world. Again, it has something to do with conclusion number one. The third part of the presentation is the Brazilian investment scenario. That's how I finished, and uh, it's based on this report by the Central Bank of Brazil. Uh, so here you have the position of Brazil in 2016. It was not yet those 800 billion, but it was more like 400 billion, 700 billion, I'm sorry. Uh, part of it, a big part of it was equity, and another part of it was debt instruments, meaning that uh, uh, it, it is money that is put not as capital in the companies, in the subsidiaries in Brazil, but as uh, intercompany loans, for example, as debt instruments instead of capitalization. Uh, there is this, uh, you can see, we can see that there is this, with the exception of 2015, which was somehow impacted by, um, by the big recession in Brazil, the, 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 the line of this stock of foreign direct investment in Brazil is, is very stable. Um, now I would like to say something about uh, the immediate and ultimate investment in Brazil. Um, it's two ways of seeing how foreign direct investment works. A country A, for example, uh, may have the money, but it may not invest directly in Brazil. It may invest in a, in a company in a third country, and this other country would invest in Brazil. It's the same money. So, for example, China, as we will see, sometimes it doesn't invest directly in Brazil. It invests through uh, another country, and this other country invests in Brazil. So, this is the distinction between immediate and ultimate investment. When we look, for example, at the immediate uh, investing uh, report of the central bank, we see that 65% of all the investment, of all the liability position in Brazil is owned by, the, by Europe, and 22 by North America. But, and if we try to look at the countries where the, where the money is coming from, the immediate, um, the immediate country seems to be the Netherlands. So the Netherlands seems to be the largest investor in Brazil. But it's not the ultimate invest, largest investor in Brazil. It's just the immediate one. For, for example, for tax purposes, there are countries that prefer to have a subsidiary in, in the Netherlands before they transfer money to Brazil. And that's what a few companies do. So the Netherlands is not the origin of the top investment in Brazil. If we look at this chart, for example, in 2015, uh, you may, one may think that it's 25% of all of the investment. But no, as the ultimate investor, the money passed only through the Netherlands. It's only 4% 
that uh, comes directly from the Netherlands. The rest, 21%, as we will see, comes from uh, different countries. The top country investing in Brazil, then, is the United States, uh, uh, followed by Belgium and by Spain, and then by the UK and France, in this order. So, if you add up all of this, uh, Europe is going to be responsible for around 50% of the ultimate investment in Brazil. So, which countries use the Netherlands as the channel to invest in Brazil? Belgium. Almost 100% of all the investment of Belgium comes through the Netherlands. For investment from Italy, 51% of it comes from uh, the Netherlands, but comes through the Netherlands. Uh, Luxembourg is also a big investor in Brazil, but if you look, China invests 66% of its money in Brazil through Luxembourg, so it doesn't go direct. China is the ultimate investor, Luxembourg is the immediate investor. By the way, China is increasing its investments in Brazil in the last few years. 2014, we had something around $2 billion. Now we got close in 2017, we got close to $11 billion. Where is China investing all, uh, is investing its money in Brazil? It's investing in infrastructure. 72% is in electricity and the rest in the other areas. So China is investing heavily in Brazil in infrastructure. If you look here at the size of the companies, um, if you can see that there are seven, almost 17,000 companies, foreign companies in Brazil. And if you look at the size of the companies, here is, uh, here is between uh, 0 and 1 million, and here is above 10 million, so you have an increase in the size of the investment. You can see that there are around 11,000, more than 11,000 companies in Brazil that have investments up to $1 million. Uh, and only two companies in Brazil have investments above uh, to $10 billion. So this is an interesting point. Um, you know, it's not only for large companies to invest in Brazil, but you have companies from uh, quite different sizes and it's pretty much spread up, spread out in, uh, in, in this table. Uh, where does the money goes to go to? 55% uh, of all the money in 2016 is going to the service area, and 37% uh, is going to the manufacturing area, and only 8% is going to agriculture. It used to be 16%, but it decreased to 8. Industry remained pretty much the same, and uh, the service sector increased from 45 to 55 percent. So the foreign direct investment in Brazil has been more and more concentrated in the services part of the economy. Um, where specifically in services, 17 percent of all the companies that are in Brazil are in the commerce, uh, excluding vehicles. So you have 17 percent of them in commerce, 10 percent in the financial sector, and you have 10 percent also in real estate in Brazil. It used to be more in the past. Um, of the total jobs created in Brazil in this period between 2010 and 2015, out of the 36 million, uh, almost 37 million, uh, million uh, formal jobs in Brazil in this period, 9% of it was, uh, was because of foreign direct investment. So foreign direct investment in Brazil is uh, responsible for almost 10% of the formal jobs. It's not the total jobs, it's the formal jobs. We also have a lot of informal jobs and we have other kinds of occupations in Brazil. But out of the formal jobs, 10%, almost 10% comes from this investment. Where are these people working? 18% of them are working here in commerce. 7% of them are working in the auto industry. And then you have 6% in telecommunications and another 6% in food stuff. So where is the money going in Brazil? It's going to commerce, it's, uh, and, and this is the, the, the people who are working, and where are the jobs created here? They are created in commerce, they are created in motor vehicles, telecommunications, and food stuff. Uh, getting close to the end of the presentation, um, here is a list of all the countries that invest in Brazil. So as of 2016, and as of the ultimate investor in the country, the U.S., United States, was 22%. Um, so it was the large. It is the largest investor in Brazil, followed by Spain with 13%, and Belgium 9%, France. 
Japan, and so on and so forth. Norway, as I mentioned, is right here at the 18th position, and it has a liability, a total liability in Brazil of around six billion and six hundred thousand, six hundred million dollars. Sweden is the 25th, and it has uh, almost two billion. Um, Norway's investment in Brazil is divided uh, pretty much well, almost equally between this part uh, that is the extractive industries, basically oil and uh, uh, bauxite, uh, alumina. Uh, and then you also have uh, $2.4 billion invested in the manufacturing industries in Brazil. Sweden pretty much uh, invests everything in the manufacturing sector. So Norway has been increasing its participation, but it has a total of $6.6 .6 billion of investment. My for formal conclusions in trying to answer those questions is that although there was a decrease in global investments, Brazil continues to be one of the first countries to receive foreign direct investment in Brazil. Why is that? My theory is that it's because of this huge internal market uh, that, uh, you know, um, you have people to buy things. And as long as these people have more and more money, then you have a market that grows more and more for huge amounts, uh, as I mentioned about the auto industry, for example. These are the three countries that invest the most in Brazil. China has been investing a lot and the political instability of the previous years was not the responsible or didn't affect very much foreign direct investment in Brazil. So these are my conclusions. Um, thank you very much. My name is Rafael de Souza. Here I have some information about me, um, and I'm free for contact and uh, for further questions. Please get in touch with me. Uh, bye bye.